Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this latest version of uh, Tales, Tales from Tales, Outer Tales, Space, Tales, Space, Tales, Space, where I take an HFY story from somewhere around the internet and read it aloud for your enjoyment. All the relevant links are down below. Like, subscribe, and all that YouTube comf to help this video and channel grow. Anyways, as always, I hope that you enjoy. I would just like to thank the following tier 5 patrons and channel members for supporting the channel. Data Magnet and Bob the Dragon. Thank you again. And now, on to the story. Story number 1. They Ate Us, written by D. Moth the Tomb. The Galactic Central Union had been around for longer than most of its member species kept historical records. As such, its early history and even founding have remained a mystery. And yet, as far back as every species' records do go, there has always been stories of the Devourers. The Devourers are said to be towering bipedal beasts with a hunger for all for which could be eaten, which to them was everything. Parents would tell their children that the Devourers would eat them up if they didn't behave or go to bed on time. Despite these things just being stories used by parents to get the young to behave, it has always remained in question how or why these stories are the one thing to have been outliers to the otherwise strict cultural barrier between Union species throughout history. Of course, no one truly believed in the Devourers once they grew up. They are just another old boogeyman story, exaggerated every time it's told. Some historians joke that the original story of the Devourers might have been just some old men telling their grandkids about how much they ate during the harvest season. Nevertheless, others believe that every myth begins with some semblance of truth. Even in the modern age where FTL flight is common practice and the Union border stretches further than ever before, there are those who are superstitious. My people, the Galat, have too had the Devourer stories deeply rooted in our past. However, as a small quadrupedal species with no defense but a small hide and curled horns, we made up for our lack of strength with our intellect and became the leading governmental species in the Union. With this pride to uphold, we no longer teach our children such fictional stories. One then can imagine my surprise to our ambassador. A distant communication had been detected. An audio first contact had been made with a new species from the outer galactic arms, who called themselves Cumons. Eager to engage in first new contact since the founding of the Union, an envoy ship, my ship, was deployed immediately. The Humans had agreed to send their own envoy ship and meet halfway between our two territories. My dispatch ship was small, designed to glide with the waves of space. Truly a vessel made for speed. As a result, my ship had arrived early, though I did not need to wait long. Arriving slightly early themselves as well, Humans' ship burst into the scene. And when I say that, I mean literally. Unlike our ships, which get their speed by smoothly gliding through FTL space, the human ship was a massive dark brick of harsh geometric shapes and sharp edges, which seemed to force its way through space with absolute brute strength alone. I had expected their fastest envoy ship to be small and elegant like mine, but what I saw instead probably could have qualified as a city in space. Along its side, painted in mile-high letters of the human's language, the ship's insignia read, ITCSS Authras. My visual translator informed me that the acronym and name meant Imperial Terran City Starship. The name Othrus came from a mystical creature which ate the human sun and moon. Immediately, I'm skeptical of the human's cognitive ability. Not just is that an extremely strange name for a ship, but it's based on a clearly impossible story. Not even to mention the fact that this ship is clearly an inefficient design in FTL, and they send a city ship of civilians to a first contact situation. Nevertheless, I had come this far, and the fact that they can build ships like that in the first place is an impressive show of their industrial might. After a short radio communication with the apparent captain and ambassador, I docked with the human ship. 
I walked into the docking ring and waited for the airlock to open so that I would finally meet the new people. But when the doors opened, I froze up and nearly fell over. What greeted me was not like anything in the Union. The humans were a tall species, to the point I only reached up to the waist at most. And the legs, only two! An upright bipedal race with a pair of two forward-facing eyes meant for hunting. I tried to calm myself down. Admittedly, I was probably far too nervous for my pay grade. After all, in the Union, carnivorous and omnivorous species are not uncommon. I think the sheer shock of their bipedalism and how they showed their teeth in a smile while peering down at me just made me uncomfortable. Surprisingly, after my embarrassing freeze-up at the beginning, first contact was going well. Once the humans realized that I was too small to keep up with their stride, they kindly decided to carry me for the tour. Yet, my mind was sent into chaos, not by this embarrassing situation, but by what came next. After the tour, I was brought into the dining hall for what the humans called a celebratory feast, to celebrate the successful first contact. I brought my own rations from my ship to this feast, knowing that I wouldn't be eating any of their dishes, which turned out to be a wide mix of meats and greens. Yet, something was off, something that these humans seemed familiar in my mind. But from where? I racked my mind, trying to remember where these seemed vaguely familiar from. And then it hit me. The devourers, towering my beetles who would eat anything and everything. I'm not one to jump to conclusions. However, I had already reached my limit of being able to ignore the stress. Were the humans the devourers from myths? Had they come to our sector of space and interacted with our ancestors? If that is the case, then what did the humans do that made every other race demonize them? These and many more pointless speculations raced through my mind until I could take no more and just outright asked, Have your people ever been in our sector of space before and met our kind? This time the captain froze. He placed down his cutlery and turned to face me with those piercing, forward-facing eyes. Yes, he said. We have been to your sector before, but back then it was ours. This answered one question that opened a floodgate of more questions, all of which would get me nowhere. So I simply asked him to explain. In response, he made a claim which I could not comprehend. Every last one of you originated on one planet in your union. I don't know what you call it, but it's our planet. Earth. I froze up again. This time, I fell off the chair and onto the floor. From above, I heard the captain sigh and mumble. The old zoology books did say that goats freeze up when anxious. End of story. Story number two. Humans are old. Written by Origami. It had been quite a few years since the last time a human had visited our town. And a precarious uproar ensued, as always. From the eldest to the freshest of pups, every one of us wished to meet the human, to speak with them, to be spoken to, and to bask in the light for even a moment. Humans live five as many lifetimes as the rest of us. Indeed, a great-grandson may live to see the end of a human that his great-grandfather had known since birth. They never forgot the friendship we had, bringing us to the table teaching us and preparing us for sentience as they uplifted us, protecting us from harm as we had always strived to do for them, even unto death. They cherish us like children, and even the oldest of us cannot help but feel childlike in their embrace. Even now, though by human standards we are about the same age, the young human who sits calmly amongst my peers seems more divine than one could imagine. Though they drilled us into not falling into the train of thought, they were not divine, and just like us. They too perished with the passing of time. There were fewer humans now. They had long since gone, leaving behind only a fragment of their passing. Shepherds and protectors to see us on our way, to follow them when we were ready. 
The swift tail of a small pup smacked dully against the human who was seated with a young girl in his lap. She squirmed in excitement as he laughed ever boisterously as he attempted to calm her down with an affectionate petting. Her excitement seemed to blossom, and so, unfortunately, the pup's mother had to extract the young one from the human's lap, lest he be set upon by a playful puppy. How long will you be with us, master? spoke an elder hound, his great big ears folded over his eyes, his hands gripping upon a cane as he shakily stood in attendance. The human gazed upon his figure, and a small sign of sadness filled his eyes at the visage of the elder. The young man stood towering over the canines of varying breeds, all who watched him attentively. He gently reached out to the elder, who perked up and whose tail began drifting in the wind. As long as you need me, old friend, he said, his voice quiet but easy for any canine to hear. The young man leaned forward, placing a kiss atop the elder's brow. As long as you need me, he reassured. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment, just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.